Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm going to show you all the different watercolour techniques I use to create this cute little hedgehog painting. I'll show you some of the more traditional wet on wet and wet on dry techniques, as well as a few less traditional methods that are great for adding interest and texture to your painting, both quickly and easily, whether you're a beginner to watercolour or a bit more experienced. All the materials I've used today will be listed in the description box, along with a reference photo from Pixabay, so let's get started. I started this painting with the background, and for this I wanted a blurry out of focus look. So to achieve this I used the wet on wet technique. I prepared the colours I wanted to use first and then wet the area of my paper that I wanted to paint with clean water before adding paint. Here I'm adding olive green. I apply it loosely with my size 12 brush and a darker pigment where I want the colour to be darker on the background. I also add in some sap green whilst the paper is still wet and some brown ochre too, and let the colours mix together on the surface of the damp paper. I'm going to use brown ochre to paint the leaf, so I thought adding some into the background as well would help tie it all together. I paint the rest of the background in the same way, and pull out some of the paint onto the dry paper around the hedgehog's body. Watercolour does tend to dry a bit lighter, especially when you're using the wet on wet technique as the paint is diluted by the water on the paper. But once the first layer is completely dry, you can simply re-wet it with clean water again and add a second layer of paint to part or all of the background to get the result and colour intensity you want. And that's what I did here. I can soften out any paint edges with a clean damp brush to keep that blurry out of focus look. Next I'm going to paint the foreground and for this I'm going to be using some cling film wrap. I wanted to build in some interesting texture to this part of the painting but I didn't want to fuss too much or try to copy the reference photo exactly and this is a really easy way to create texture fast. As before I prepared my paint colours first, I went with Winsor & Newton Sepia, Sennelier's Warm Sepia, some Mission Gold Van Dyke Brown and lastly some of Daniel Smith's Payne's Blue Grey. I also tore off a piece of cling film so I had everything I needed ready. As for this technique to work, you need to apply the cling film onto your paper whilst the paint is still wet. I wanted to cover this large area of foreground quite quickly, so it was back to the wet on wet technique again, pre-wetting my paper with clean water first before dropping in paint. I applied the watercolours quite generously and loosely and let the colours mix together on the surface of the paper. The good thing about this technique is that the cling film wrap will create the texture for you, so all you need to think about is your colours and values. I tried to use more concentrated pigment in areas of shadow and wasn't too worried about leaving some of the white of the paper peeping through as I thought it would add interest and contrast. Once I was happy with it and with the paint still wet all I had to do next was to lay my piece of cling film on top of the paper. You can scrunch or manipulate the cling wrap any way you want to, or you can just see what happens, it's totally up to you, but it's as easy as that. All you need to do then is leave it to dry before you lift it off. I really love how this turned out and will definitely be trying this again in future paintings. It's time to paint the leaf next and once again I'm going to paint the first layer wet on wet. This is just to get a base colour down. I'll go back and add details later on. I've switched down to a size 4 round brush for this so I can carefully paint up to the edges of the leaf and I start to map out where the lightest and darkest values will be using a fairly dilute mix of brown ochre. The paper is damp so I get nice soft paint edges and I leave the lightest part of the leaf free of paint altogether for now so I can always go darker with the addition of further layers. 
before this layer has dried, I also go in with a bit of the warm sepia on the darkest area of the leaf that I can see from my reference photo. And I paint onto dry paper when I paint the dark stem in of the leaf as well. Painting onto dry paper gives me a bit more control and precision. And it's the wet on dry method that I use for this second leaf in shadow here. So I've mixed burnt sienna with a bit of Indian red and apply a really juicy mixture of paint onto the dry paper. I can still soften out any hard edges I don't want with a clean damp brush. Painting onto dry paper means your watercolours won't be diluted by water already on the paper, like in the wet on wet technique, and as long as you don't have too much water on your brush, you can continue to add different colours or more pigment whilst your paper is still damp. If you have too much water on your brush though, you could create watercolour blooms which you may not want. But painting onto dry paper in this way is great for smaller areas where you might either want more precision and control, or where you want to keep your colours bright and vibrant without having to add multiple layers. I continue to paint wet on dry to paint in the rest of this leaf. There are quite a lot of different parts to it, so I carefully painted one section at a time, taking note of where the lightest and darkest areas were as I went along. Next, and whilst waiting for the leaves to dry, I moved my attentions onto the hedgehog and began by preparing some more sepia and Payne's blue grey. I started on the hedgehog's face and snout by painting in some directional fur strokes just using water on my brush. Then I dipped into my sepia and blue grey mix and just started to apply light sweeping strokes in the direction of fur growth. This had the result of adding a bit more variety into the fur texture here, as I had a mixture of hard and soft edges. Hard edges where the paper was dry, and soft edges where the paper was damp. I went on to paint his nose using more concentrated Payne's Blue Grey, and being careful to leave the tiny highlights under each nostril. I painted in the darkest parts of the eyes too, but I'll add more detail to those later on in the painting. Now for this area and with the leaves dry I can start to paint in those all important quills on the hedgehog's back. I begin again pre-wetting the whole area with clean water before dropping in a really concentrated sepia mix. This area is really dark underneath the leaf. And on the face of it these quills are going to be really tricky to paint. But I came up with a technique that makes it a lot more simple. So to start with, I'm just putting this sepia colour all over the hedgehog's back. Whilst the paper is still damp, I add in darker pigments still, and try and move my brush in the direction that the quills are growing in. Around the hedgehog's face, where the paper is dry, I use the negative painting technique to paint around some of the quills and around the ear here. I also pull some of the wet paint out onto the dry paper, and use the very tip of my brush to produce spiky quills with a tapered end. Not all the quills are uniform in their direction, so I try to mix it up a bit to make the painting look more realistic. But I still wanted to add some more detail to the hedgehog's back, and for this I used a rather unconventional method, but one that worked pretty well so I thought I'd share it with you. The watercolour paint on the hedgehog's back had had time to soak into the paper a bit, but was still damp, so I used the rounded corner of my plastic ruler to gently scrape or lift off some of the paint to reveal some lighter quill shapes underneath. I used a flicking motion and a light hand so as not to damage the paper, and I wiped off the edge of the ruler after each quill. You could also use a store card or credit card for this, but it is another easy and quick way to create some fun effects without having to spend a fortune on expensive art supplies. I would suggest you try this out on a separate piece of your watercolour paper first though, to practice before trying it on your actual painting, as results might depend on what paper you're using and how much paint and water you have on it. Having pulled out some of these lighter quills and with the paper now dry, I go back to add more detail and definition using a darker, more concentrated sepia mix. I dab off some of the water on my brush onto a piece of paper towel, so it's quite dry, 
and I use the negative painting technique to paint around some of the quills to add contrast and depth. I use the very tip of my brush and create little V-shapes where the quills cross over each other. With that done, I move down the hedgehog's face and paint the shadow area over his snout using watery Payne's Blue Grey. I've got more water on my brush here, but I'm painting onto dry paper as I want a more defined edge to this shadow shape. I painted wet on dry when I added details to the hedgehog's eyes too. Eyes are one of my favourite things to paint, so I took my time here and paid more attention to my reference photo to make sure I got the details and values right. After darkening up the nose and with my painting completely dry, I realised I now needed to really darken up this area of the face and for this I used a glaze. A glaze is just a watery mix of transparent watercolour applied onto dry paper. Being able to layer transparent glazes is one of the many reasons why I love painting in watercolour. It enables you to easily change up your colour or even add in new colours without losing or covering up any of the detail that you painted in previous layers. So I added in some Magello Blue and some Violet to add interest and depth to my painting. I mix up another colour next to paint the area of shadow cast by the leaves. I used a mixture of burnt umber, neutral tint and added a tiny bit of permanent magenta too. I painted this straight onto the dry paper again as the edges to the shadow were quite defined and hard here. I painted this in quite quickly using the reference photo again as a guide but I slowed down and painted more carefully and intentionally around the fur on the hedgehog's body. Whilst I waited for this to dry, I painted in the conker on the left hand side here and then went back and adjusted my values again with another layer of paint. I made this colour from colours left over on my palette and I'm still painting onto dry paper. Now another watercolour technique I like to use to create texture easily and quickly is the dry brush technique. I touched on it earlier when I used a nearly dry brush to build up the quills on the hedgehog's back. This is where you remove any excess water from your brush on a piece of paper towel before applying it to dry paper. I use this technique here to add in a bit more of that brown ochre to the foreground. The painting is starting to come together now, but I still need to work on the leaves a bit more. So I start by painting in some of the most prominent veins in the leaf using more concentrated brown ochre. I use the very tip of my brush and a steady hand and paint these in onto dry paper. I add a bit of Windsor Violet here too. Now to correct my values and build in some more shape and form on this lower part of the leaf, it's back to the wet on wet technique again and another layer of brown ochre. And after I'd added some more veins to the leaf, I moved on to darkening up the values by adding another layer of red brown watercolour to the second leaf. I used more concentrated burnt sienna and some of the Indian red here and painted carefully onto the dry paper. And whilst that was drying, I used the dry brush technique again to scumble over some more brown ochre and some sepia to add a bit more texture to this leaf. Adding darker layers to one area of a painting often means you have to correct the values on other parts of your painting too. So with the darker layers on the leaves painted in, I decided to add one final layer of sepia to the darkest parts of the hedgehog to add more contrast and really help the painting to pop. <laughs> 
The only thing left to do now is to add in some of those whiskers. I chose to use a white coloured pencil for this as it's good for drawing fine opaque white lines but you can always use whatever you like or whatever you have at home. So here is the finished painting. I had a lot of fun with this one and really enjoyed experimenting with a few different watercolour techniques. But let me know what you think and let me know as well if you've ever used cling film wrap or etching to create different textures and effects in your watercolour paintings. If you like the video please give it a big thumbs up and a share and if you're watching my channel for the first time please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching, have a great week, stay safe and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!